gas is over four dollars a gallon. If we want to make the world safer from tyrants like Putin, we need to provide everyone access to our clean energy resources, like the natural gas right under my feet. There it is, here in Pennsylvania. So, Joe Biden, here's how we do this. It's pretty straightforward. More production, more pipelines, with less wasteful government regulations and radical left litigation. We're a major source of natural gas in the world, so let's connect our clean, reliable energy to desperate countries around the world and stop begging dictators for help. We can do better. Hey, makes a lot of sense. That's Dr. Oz, of course, running for the United States Senate in Pennsylvania right now. He's running for the Republican nomination, and he joins us once again after filling up the tank. How much did it cost you, Dr. Oz? It cost me about 100 <laughs> bucks the other day. Pretty close. The fascinating thing about that TikTok video is that I posted it yesterday. It's got 1.2 million views already. The one before it got 2 million views. TikTok took it down. I didn't understand why, so I reposted it saying, why does TikTok not want this? Seven and a half million views. And the reason is it's resonating with folks. All the woke appropriate, you know, approaches to energy, which have really held our country back. Where I am right now, which is in Erie, Pennsylvania, this whole western part of the state, they are paralyzed and they're angry about it. I mean, the folks who are bringing you food in the diner can lecture on exactly why energy makes sense, why natural gas is clean, why we need it for both reduction of inflation at the gas pump, but also for national security reasons. And we can help our allies because you can connect the direct line between the natural gas under my feet right here in Pennsylvania not being able to come up and what's going on in the Ukraine with Putin. We're actually importing natural gas on the, on the coastline of the, of the New England states because they won't let it come from Pennsylvania. Can you imagine that? Hey, what about, uh, I guess they have to get it out of the ground through fracking, right? Which is where they kind of explode under the ground. Uh, I think that's probably popular in a Republican primary, but maybe not so much in a general. Where do you stand on fracking? Fracking is okay, right? Fracking is okay, but it's not just a personal opinion. This has been looked at by the U.S. government, who's not always trustworthy, but if the federal agencies evaluating fracking where you infuse water and sand uh, under the soil in order to free up uh, you know, little areas of uh, oil and gas is, is effective and seem to be safe, which is what they're saying, believe me, they're tough as it can be. So I'm pretty confident that there's not an issue around this. They do extra cautious work around the natural water that we would drink to make sure it doesn't get polluted. So there are steps taken to ensure that the people around the fracking process are kept safe. And if you actually do your homework and understand the opportunities to help keep this world cleaner with natural gas, people will be endorsing of it. it. It wouldn't be what we're witnessing now, which is people don't know what they're talking about, making arguments for stopping fracking. And my opponent in the upcoming general election uh, here in, in Pennsylvania has asked for a moratorium on fracking. And I'm thinking, what are we talking about? We're literally witnessing Russia take over a country because it's holding Europe hostage because they've gotten woke and shut down their own natural energy production. So now Putin can do what he desires. We don't want that repeated. All right. So listen, before we get to the general, you got the primary you got to contend with. There is this guy named David McCormick. Some, I don't live in Pennsylvania, but he seems to be the swamp favorite. Um, there, there are some establishment types who are behind this guy. Um, you know, when you're running for office, you got to make the case for yourself, as you've done, and make the case against the other guy. What's wrong with him? Well, to start with, he's, he created the largest U.S.-owned hedge fund in China ever, $1.3 billion, announced that it's open for business at the end of last year, and then a month or two later, he's in the Senate campaign saying he's going to protect us. I mean, it's a classic fox in the hen house. And the biggest concern I've gotten is this, is, is this you know, classic Wall Street, Washington revolving door. And, you know, they don't share our values in Washington. That's why they get it the wrong all the time. They sell us out. And I don't want people getting scammed by the swamp. That's why as an outsider, I feel confident in our campaign. We do these town halls like I had today. You covered one, Greg, that God bless you. We get hundreds of people coming in these small towns because no one's paying attention to them. I want to see my opponents in the Senate race do the same. Bring together a couple hundred people, get them galvanized with the ideas that, we, that they can hear and feel respected with. And that's what President Trump did. If you look at his real effort, he got the people who felt ignored, who felt like they were waiting at the, at the line, the gas line, the water line, whatever, and their turn never came because the government didn't seem to understand them, care about them, or listen to them. And when you talk about really impacting people here in Pennsylvania, you have to show up. You have to get them confident. You get their mojo back. So look, 
I've been very upfront about my admiration of Dr. Oz, of you. I, I think you'd be an amazing U.S. senator. I will tell you that I have met people from MAGA world who are like, oh, no, I, uh, we don't, uh, we're suspicious of Dr. Oz. Not all, but some. And I've heard it. Make your case to them because there are some, you know, hardcore, really, you know, Trump people who say, I, we just, we're not sure yet about Dr. Oz. Uh, what's the problem? Well, if you look at what I've done, forget about everything else. Look at what I've done. I've taken on Big Pharma, Facebook, and Fauci to protect you. I've gone to battle with the most powerful forces out there, including the U.S. government, to ensure that at the time my viewers were protected. That's what President Trump would do. In fact, I had President Trump on my show a month before the election because I thought he had a right to articulate why he should be president to the American people. and got immense grief for having done that, literally giving a candidate for president the platform to speak to America. And I served on the President's Council for Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition for the same passion. I want to get out there and make people understand what they can do to be world experts on their health. Is there a more obvious way in which the Trump approach to politics has manifested itself than to give you confidence that the government will get out of your way because they trust you to make your own decisions? If you look at the criticism that I received from the left media, New York Times being at the forefront frequently, it's a badge of honor, by the way, they criticized me the other day, not just for being a bad person, but also because they said I was dangerous. And why? Because they argued I believe in something called individualism. And I'm going to quote them. They said, in a time of global warming, systemic racism, and COVID, there's no room for individualism. It's too dangerous to trust us to do it by ourselves. Guilty as charged. I think that's exactly how we'll get over those obstacles and many, many more. And my similar arguments about why Washington got it wrong with COVID, with their educational system, with the porous border, which is basically a cartel-run human trafficking operation with drugs joining the human flow. These are all issues that people who are, set, who are pre appropriately understanding of what patriots in America desire share my views on. All right. Wow. Yes. Dr. Oz, hated by the fake news. That is a badge <laughs> of honor. Dr. Oz, listen, you are the healthiest guy around. You are on the President's Council. Give us a tip, if you would. Um, you're marvelous for this kind of stuff. Just something small that we can do, that we can change in our lives right away, that can make us feel better. Well, I'll tell you, at our town halls, where we try to give a dose of reality, we ask, what's getting your blood pressure up? because blood pressure is the number one killer of all. So know your blood pressure, and a cool way of losing a little weight and dropping your blood pressure because of losing the weight is to, to just delay your breakfast a couple hours. Just push it back. You're not hungry when you first get up in the morning anyway. Have a cup of coffee, delay your first calories till 10 o'clock at night. You'll see some pounds drip off, and that'll bring your blood pressure down as well. That works. I can tell you, for, I, and you also told me to go to bed every night at the same time, even on weekends. I don't always do it, but when I do, I do feel a lot better. Well, Dr. Roz, thank you very much. Uh, go to uh, drroz.com for more information and uh, stay in touch. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on, Greg. Take care.